So right now I'm working on a shoulder holster. And I haven't made one exactly like this before. It's not like the shoulder holsters I've made in the past, which were for concealed carry. You know, like you'd see an old detective carrying their handgun in an old movie. This is more like the type of shoulder holsters for an open carry for somebody that would hunt with a handgun. And that means I had to change my patterns around a good bit to come up with it, but I think I've got them all adjusted and I think I figured out a pattern for it. Okay, so one thing that's usually just plain wrong about how people do shoulder holsters is they just cut straight straps and wrap them around and call it good. And that's not really the most comfortable way to make a shoulder holster because everything on the human body is curved. So my usual pattern that I use would wrap around and come up over the shoulder and then under the arm with two curved pieces like this. So I adapted that because it needs to lay out, instead of under the arm, it needs to lay onto the front of the body and wound up with this sort of recurved piece. And that will attach by a couple straps to a holster that's very similar to a uh, cross draw holster. And then there'll be a strap that wraps all the way around the belly to a piece that goes into the back. Now somewhere in all this, there will be some elastic to make it easier to breathe, a quick release buckle, and then one of these pieces we have to where we can put a magazine pouch on it, which I don't have the pattern done for yet, but I need to make two separate magazine pouches, one for a double stack magazine and one for a single stack. Uh, the double stack, I've just got a block of leather that is shaped like it that I can use to shape the leather to, and some spring clips to attach the magazine pouches to the harness so that we'll be able to swap in and out as the customer wants to be able to use this for two different firearms that are basically going to fit the same holster but they have a different handle because they've got the different magazines and he wants to have where he can use it for both of them at this and whenever he wants to change out from one to the other and we'll also have our straight straps, which are about six ounce leather. They were thicker than that, but I just ran them through the splitter to split them down. That's not something that everybody can do, so you might wind up having to, if you try to do something like this yourself, just cut your own straps out of the right weight leather. And most of it is gonna get cut out of a five to six ounce piece of Herman Oak leather. I've got a whole side of it here. So, I've got a whole table here full of, this will eventually be a shoulder holster.
Okay, on the holster, I've got these slots punched out for where the straps are going to attach to it. I did not punch the one that goes through the back part here. I'll wait until after I've got this all assembled, and then I'll um, punch through and cut that out so that they line up perfectly. I've also marked some little dots here with the scratch all. That's where my stitch line is going to be that actually forms the holster pocket. So this is going to stitch around the outside, and then it's going to stitch on those stitch lines as well. And that'll actually be what shapes the, the holster to the sides for the particular firearm. So all this has lining pieces that need to go on it, and then again this all needs to be punched through the lining pieces as well, after they've been glued together. All that needs to still be edge beveled and stitching grooves put into it. And of course it'll need to be dyed and finished and I'm going to check with the customer but I'm pretty sure I know I have to tool something on this too. Okay, after a lot of thinking it through and looking at measurements and so on, I think I found out what length all the straps need to be to go around this particular guy that I'm making this holster for. He's a big guy, so there's a bunch of strap here. But I've got short straps for attaching the buckle onto it. I've got some other straps that are going to be used for either an adjustment in the back or the adjustments on the shoulder straps. And I've got one long strap that's going to be uh, the side that does not have the elastic on it of the, uh, the belly band that goes all the way around. So some of these are going to need the ends skived. Some of them are going to need the ends rounded out. All of them are going to need the edges beveled and get ready to uh, finish them. And I'll probably put a crease on them as well. I'll probably wet them down and run a, a uh, wing divider along it to put a crease in there just to add a little something to uh, put a border on it a bit. And these I'm just feather skyving, skyving them so they will lay completely flat whenever I finally put it all together because this is going to double back on itself and I don't want to lump like this so I'm going to feather skive both ends so it's going to lay nice and smooth and flat. These are going to need one end on them uh, skived and one end rounded out. And this long one's going to need both ends rounded out. And I've just got this plastic template. It's got a little different sizes of strap ends. I've got one that's a pointed, an English point end, and one that's round ends. And this is the round end one. one end of each one rounded out. The other end, since it's going to be put into a piece, it's also going to be skived down so we don't have a lump. And these are actually going to be adjustment straps, so they'll fold back on themselves and they'll have a screw post that you can attach in various different places to make it different lengths. So it's going to need a hole here and a hole about two inches from the along it everywhere. And the first one actually probably needs to be a little more than two inches apart. So we'll punch that one, see about what fits right for wrapping around whatever it's going to attach to. And we use that as where we punch the next one. And yeah, that comes out being about three inches apart. 
And then from then on, I'll go about every two inches. And we're just gonna use that as our guide for the next straps. Like this. This one's going to need that three inches kind of on both sides. Because one side's going to attach to the back plate piece, and the other side's going to attach directly to the hole. Again, I want to do that with screw posts. I want to make it to where I can, it can be, the holster can be taken off of the whole rig. So that'd be best because that's where your adjustment's going to be. You want a screw post in the back. You can attach it permanently to the holster. But again, like I said, I wanted to be able to take the holster off of this. chance to work on this um, regular job intrude, uh, intruded into the whole process but since then I've gotten in, in contact with the customer and I've carved on the holster a uh, little Grim Reaper which is something he wants me to carve on most things it's what I expected um, it's the same guy that I made the knife sheath for recently and I've got a video already up of how to carve or how I carved this Reaper so I won't include that in this video but it's going to complicate the coloring a little bit. Everything else just gets dyed black, but this is going to have some dyes, some paints, uh, at least some white, silver, and uh, brown paint will be on here. And some, maybe some antique stain. Okay, and paint first. We're going to start with some ivory color, not quite white. On all the bones. And some brown on the side handle and silver on the blade for the scythe. All the rest is pretty much black. And we can go ahead and do with the dye or with the black antique stain, depending on how we're feeling at the moment. We're going to have to let that dry, put a clear finish over top of the parts of the paint. We're going to do some dye work too in some of these areas. The real trick with a brush is that the dye spreads like an ink away from it. So you just kind of have to work in a little bit from the outside. These tighter areas, it helps to take the brush and get some of the dye off of it somewhere else before you get into these. If you don't do that, you can just take and daub it off on a piece of scrap or a paper towel or something and get some of the excess dye off of it so that it doesn't spread too much to some of the areas you don't want it to be. And that's where we're at so far. Now I'm going to put some clear finish on some of these spots that I don't want the stain to affect it and I'm going to go over it with an antique stain and what we'll come up with is this will be a good solid black this will be kind of a faded black and then on the parts where I've got the finish over it the parts that are now white and silver and brown those you'll still see that color but it'll be dulled down some and like I said it kind of knocks off some of the cartoon look and give some shadows and, and while that's drying so I can put the finish on it so the paint's set 
everything else needs to be dyed black too. You know, I should be smart to wear gloves. Okay, I put the clear finish on this and I let it dry. I usually let it dry overnight, but this has been a full 24 hours at least. So it's completely dry and it's, the finish is just on the parts that I painted. So that'll resist the antique stain. In this case, I'm just using a black antique. And you can get a cleaner part of your wool to kind of take it off of some of the spots. And there you go. Now this piece will get a sprayed on finish so that it doesn't smear the antique stain around. But all the other pieces are going to get resolene on them. Just wiped on. I'm going to go ahead and stitch these before I trim them, so just in case it decides to do something strange when I stitch it, it'll all trim nice and even, and I won't have to redo these holes. The same on this piece, only I'm just going to stitch the top and bottom. And on this piece, also the same way, except this only covers part of it. So I'll be able to stitch all the way around the top and all the way around these holes and across the bottom of it that's going to be the open toe of the hole. Okay, now I'm gonna have to finish up this edge and this edge along with that one before I can assemble it all together. Then once we've got it all stitched, I'll cut this out and finish up all the rest of the edges.
I think it is finally time to sew this together. Let's go ahead and get this roughly shaped. Let's wet this down on the inside and get something to put in there. This is going to be for something that's basically under 1911 frame, so I'm going to be able to use the 45 that I have to shape it at least close enough that then I'll be able to do the finish shaping whenever I meet the customer with it. And as always, with any firearm, always make sure that it is unloaded before you do anything with it. Gonna wrap it up here in some plastic wrap just to protect it. Keep it from getting rusty. And it's gonna be a bit of a loose fit in this holster because this is made for a couple different firearms that are just similar in shape. Okay, a bit of organizing going on here. We've got a piece of elastic. We've got two pieces on each end of it that are going to get sewn on. Those pieces are going to either attach to, on one side, a strap. It's going to rivet into it. And that's going to be one of our adjustment straps. The other side is going to have a piece that goes into it that's going to be attached to a quick-release buckle. We'll just go ahead and put that on and stitch it on after we get the pieces finished up. The other half of the quick release buckle is just going to go on this other strap and it's going to be left just tied onto it with some holes punched on it so it can be put on with a screw post because we want to be able to take it back off later if we need to either replace this or if the customer wants to use the holster just as a cross draw holster he can take all the straps off of it and just use it as a holster then. Um, this piece is the part that goes over the shoulder. It has two pieces on each end. They're going to be attached on and sewn in place. And those are for holding two more adjustment straps. One that goes down to the holster and one that goes down to the back plate, which is this piece here. And then we've got another long strap that goes underneath um, the left arm in this case, the side that he's going to wear it on. And that's going to be an adjustment strap that goes all the way from the holster to the back plate. This little stack here is the last few things. There are some keepers for all these adjustment straps to keep. So our next step will be sewing some stuff together a little bit. We're going to sew on the uh, pieces that are on the elastic and the pieces that are on the shoulder strap. And then we can finish the edges up on everything. And we should be getting close to putting it all together. Okay, I'll make sure the pieces that go on the elastic come out nice and neat and even. I'm going to actually line them up together and do some of the stitching before I put the elastic in between them. And then open it up. And we can put our elastic piece in. pieces are simple. We're just going to stitch around them. This piece is going to have another strap that attaches into it, but it's also going to be opened up a little bit here, and that's where the magazine pouch is going to clip onto the shoulder holster.
the valve, what I'm going to do in this video is I've got the shoulder holster, the holster and the uh, straps done for it. I still have to make the magazine pouch, which is going to catch on this little uh, slot that I have right here for it. And I was thinking about how to showing how this fit, but it's made for a customer that's about twice my size. So it made his measurements and not going to fit me well, but I figured I could at least show you why some of these pieces are shaped the way that they are. So this is part goes over the shoulder. We'll have this part wrap around and catch, and as you can see, it's way too big. The holster itself fits right down against um, the side of the stomach, or out in the front of it almost. And that's where the customer wanted it. He wanted basically the hunting style shoulder holster. This strap is shaped the way it is, so that it sits up on the meat of the shoulder, up on the trapezius, not hanging out on the bones of the shoulder where it feels like it's going to fall off all the time. And the, the curve in it makes it feel like it really just stays in place. This curve on it wraps around the shoulder bone, or the collarbone. So you don't have uh, straps resting across bone, you've got it resting on muscle, on the meat so that it doesn't feel like you've got a bruise after wearing this for a few hours. So that's why this strange shape to it. The same basic shape of strap, um, on somebody my size, this one would probably wrap all the way across to the other hip if you wanted to make a strap that ran straight across. Uh, you can just change this curve to make it go across, down, or if it curves back the other way, it'll go underneath this arm and all those will still sit comfortably on the shoulders, just where the rest of it is going to sit afterwards. So, this strap is adjustable for under the arm. There's a strap on the front and the back that are adjustable for going over the shoulder that attach to this um, small back plate. Keeper loops keep the strap from um, opening up when it's adjusted. Keep it all nice and tight and neat. And that is this shoulder holster. It's a lot more complicated than ones that I've made in the past. I might make a one of my regular patterns in a future video just to show an easier way to make a shoulder holster and more of a concealable holster. But that'll do it for this video. I'm going to make the next video will probably be making that magazine pouch to put on there. And if you found this useful or helpful or even just entertaining, be sure to hit the like button. If you want to see similar videos of things that I'm making, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you want to see past videos of things that I've already made, there's several of them already on the channel, so you can always check out the channel page and watch a few more of our videos. Thank you for watching.